I think for me, uh, it's the it's the inhumanity that comes with the, this kind of diagnosis. It's like the doctors already know or feel that they can't do anything about it. And then when they give you this news, you're somehow supposed to find some hope within you mm. uh, to proceed. Mm. So you took her home. I took her home. Mm -hmm. I took her home and after the surgery. After the surgery. And how was that? Hmm. Let me tell you. There is something called a pot of vac. Do you know it? A what? A pot of vac. <laughs> Even me, I used to study. Like in class, you are taught about pot of vacs. Now you are going home with your mother in a pot of vac. A pot of vac is any any body part in your body. There is a blood flow to it. Ah. So the moment it's cut, <coughs> blood still continues to flow. Mm -hmm. So this pot of pack mm -hmm. is to receive this. Blood. until the body registers ah, oh this body is not there so they stop giving it blood so blood fills the potovac and then you empty it every day measuring how much mm -hmm. because you need to know uh, is it reducing is it increasing there is pain of a wound but i thank god like the wound is not so plain it is sealed and then there mm. is offside spray I don't know whether you understand I say upside spray. It's a spray that you spray on a wound that water cannot get in. Mm -hmm. So, but I had to bathe my mother. I had to manage the potovac. She was meant to go to the clinic every three days. That's transport. Every clinic there is consultation fee. Mm -hmm. There is any money needs to flow. Yeah. Also your time. Time. Yeah time because if you're working then you have to i stopped and, and everything and you also get sick as the one taking you care are of sick the who takes care of the caregivers mm. who takes care the of children, the caregivers the children of the, the sick patient who takes care of them mm. Mm. cancer is such a heavy burden I, I i by the time my mother was starting chemo and radiotherapy she did every single other thing and she was strong god gave her strength mm. that she she went through it she could do chemo and go back to the village mm. Mm. then come back the next visit mm. me she was strong yeah. my chemo was was bad mm. I, the day the day that you leave uh, okay i go because you have to get a slot the the, the 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 whatever the beds are few they take like i don't know whether it was 11 per day mm. where i used to go there. But if you you have to be there by seven, six mm. thirty yeah. seven yes. Yes. to get a slot. You can imagine you are coming from far. Some people used to come even from up country. Yes, yes. Yeah. Like my mother. So you and you could, you can also mi miss a slot. Then it means you have to stay. find a place to stay mm. and wait for the mm. next day. Mm. And, and this is money, remember? Yes, it's money. So you go there very early. You get a slot. Sometimes if you don't get a bed, you get a chair. I have a picture I took when I took my first chemo. So you sit on that chair, they do chemo for you. I go home with a pot that I had to stay with for 24 hours. Hmm. Then I go back again to, be, to, to remove the pot and then be given white blood cells. Because they have been killed, all of them. Yes. And then you are told to be careful not to mingle with people. Remember my time, that time it was COVID time. Mm -hmm. So you are sick, you are very delicate. And I remember when I, the day that I, uh, the, my first chemo, when I came home, I was so sick. I had to be taken back to the hospital again. Sweating, the sweat smells bad, chemicals. You are sweating, you are vomiting. Mm -hmm. You are so weak, you are confused, you feel like you want to die. I don't know why it brings so much emptiness. Yeah, in yeah, 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 yeah. Like yeah. you have no hope left within. Because mm -hmm. for me, that that is the time I saw like I wasn't going to make it. All along, I thought I would make it. It's not that bad. Cancer is just like malaria. It's just a name. But then after chemo, I it was it was bad. It hit me. Did you? Um have this hope that we're talking about that after the chemo you would be okay. Ah, 
to suffer. Like when you're going through it, did you ever feel like, okay, this thing is treating me and I'll be okay. I need to finish the, the rounds of chemo. Yes, you know that hope you have it, but now the pain, the pain that comes with chemo mm. and you're losing weight, because imagine I was 90 kilos, then I went shh, to 56 kilos. Mm. Within a span of, I think, two months, mm. I was 56. Just 56. You have, you, you people don't know what it feels to be small. I couldn't mm. sit down on a, on a table like this. Because you just feel bones. the bones. <laughs> I couldn't sleep with my legs together. I had to put a pillow in between. Because the ritual mm. is so wasted. And when you are showering, you have to make sure that there's a heater. My God. Yeah, because there is... Oh. And I remember that you can't even... Somebody has to take you. Oh my God. Even the pain of your child seeing you in that kind of state. Oh my God, it was so painful. Mm -hmm. oh, thank you, Lord. You took me away. <sighs> Imagine you become so useless. I can't shower alone. Somebody has to take me and shower me. I remember Sometimes I would wait for friends to come and shower me because I couldn't let my child shower me. It's behind us now. Yeah. The things that people take for granted in life. That you can wake up and go and shower. That you can wake up and go and take, go and bask in the sun. Yeah. That you can just wake up and feed yourself. You know, I reached a place I couldn't even feed. Somebody had to feed me. You're so dependent on yes. somebody. Yes. As you talk about depending on somebody, I am the somebody to my mother. It was not easy. Mm. She's waiting for you. She's waiting for you to come and bathe her. If you're not available, she'll stay. You don't understand it from the perspective of that patient. You understand it from the burden of you who is going to do this task. And then another thing I just remembered, you know, as a cancer patient, I used to, they would cook for me food. And you tell them to bring it at that time, maybe they delay like five minutes when they bring the food I don't want it and then you tell them give me time people will not understand you mm. another thing is uh, the child my daughter suffered a lot she the one, one day she came and asked me where is God every time I come to this house I find you sleeping or in the hospital what is happening, ma'am? For how long are you going to be sick? You know, if you are sick for like today, tomorrow you take medicine and you're well. But when it takes too long, people give up on you. Yeah, yeah. People it's gave true. up on me. Mm. My own family gave up on me. But thank God, because God will always bring somebody. Yeah. He will bring a friend. And that's why we are here today. Because you used to come and visit me. I just want to post and say, all oh, these cans, these cans of Tori's brother, these cans of Jackie, I got a chance to look at them myself. I didn't see hope myself. I shared with my colleagues. They looked at it. The first question is, Remember Jackie's card, who is this? Don't tell me it's you. Then I say, no, it's not me. <sighs> this one is dying. I didn't even tell Jackie, I didn't tell anybody. This one, <laughs> we can't even do surgery, we can't, just palliative chemo. But here we are, here we are. It didn't end like that for, 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 for Turi's case. Let's just give her a chance to tell us how it ended with the brother. 
Thank you, why you making me cry? <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah, for my brother, <laughs> it ended differently. Um, yeah. So, from the grafting, the beginning of all the problems. So the grafting didn't take. And then, uh, so of course we got uh, a chance to do chemotherapy and radiotherapy, which as you describe, it's, it's a journey of its own. Mm. And it's also very tasking for the patient because um, <laughs> the first thing I ask them is, can we get a word so that he, because it's every day, can we get a wardroom? We'll pay for it. No. You have to go home, bring him every morning at 7. Then he has to do the, the chemotherapy. Um, and then also the radiotherapy. So they don't prepare you so much. Because for the radiotherapy, especially, remember, there was, I know you know the medical term, but there was like a, so they, they take you, they, how do you say, they, they, it's a mask it's a is it a mask mm -hmm. it's like um, a heart yeah it's like a heart that fits well to your head mm -hmm. so we had to take him to get that it's molded to fit your mm -hmm. every person's head so that and then yeah it ended in death it ended in death my brother passed on um yeah so he went through the chemotherapy, he went through the radiotherapy. Why I ask you about hope is because my brother was always hopeful. Mm. Because having had, again, having had, had an underlying condition mm. um, and having managed that, he approached cancer the same way. So he thought um, if we adhere to everything that we are being told by the doctors, if we do the chemo, if we do the radiotherapy, he will be well mm. which i really admired my brother for that hope because that hope it also gave us hope mm. as his care give us mm. and anytime i would feel like i want to give up it's that hope that made me want to to, <laughs> to um, of course i was not going through it like him mm. but it also gave me hope to take care of him and take take him to this appointment okay he did all of that and we finished the wound never healed now it was big now it, it was like the palm of my hand mm -hmm. it was big mm -hmm. so we had to figure out um <clears throat> because they say after you do chemotherapy and radiotherapy you need to give it time mm -hmm. for the medicine to work mm -hmm. we were hopeful it would work how it would work we, we didn't know. know we were just trusting on god he would get healed and so months and months and a year went by, the wound was still there. We had to dress the wound. At first, we were to dress it twice a week. So I would take him twice a week for dressing. And then it became like about four times, like every other day. Mm -hmm. I have to take him uh, for dressing of the wound. And then, uh, yeah, he just, I think for my brother, it was the hope. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. hope started going away. Mm -hmm. And then... <laughs> It's like you are in the hospital. There is no hope coming from the doctors. Yeah. yeah. You are in a family setting. There is no hope coming from the family setting. Mm. You are in a friend setting. There is no hope. I mean, like you said, it's like you look at it and you say, "I don't think. I don't think we can go ahead with it. Like nothing will come. Well, nothing good will come out of this." Mm. Okay. So it was constant. Um, uh, negative reports from everybody okay and we could only trust in God <laughs> basically <laughs> he was our only anchor hmm. it, it it reached a point now uh, when we went to the doctors they would just tell us there's nothing much we can do yeah. and they would tell him while he was sitting there that really hurt me because I would think, <laughs> yeah. prepare us or, you know, just tell me so I can tell him because he's a minor. Mm. Okay. But the, he would be sitting there and they would say, if we take you to the theater, you won't come out alive. 
but you've not gone to ask for theater. <laughs> That's the same thing they told me. That's yeah. the same thing. When now I had to make a, a U-turn, yeah. the, the doctor tells me, there's nothing much you can do, Jackie. Because after doing all those four chemos, the cancer now went to stage four. I had cancer in the lungs, I had cancer in the liver, the lymph nodes, and the stomach had already it spread until the outer part of the stomach. So the doctor tells me uh, I, that's the time when I went for PET scan. PET scan. When I went for PET scan, I remember that day as I went, I, my sugar level was 2.2. And then they asked me, how did you walk up to this place? That was the day I was so strong. I walked alone. Nobody held my hands. Mm. And then they tell me now, go back to your oncologist because there's nothing that you can do. And I Does said, thank feel? God. Now that the doctors have tried and there's no hope, my hope is anchored on God. This is your report. As mm. for me, I am healed and mm. I'm not doing anything else. And I stopped taking medicine. Wow. All, 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 all the cases of this thing called cancer. Mm. Everybody has a very different story. There is no, there is no straight path like diarrhea. Malaria, <laughs> headache, all these conditions have a straightforward path. But cancer has been. Can I? I keep. I. As I said again in my video, I said even the scientists are doing research. Mm. Even the treatment that Jackie used to get well, I want to think that they are also even undergoing more research. Yes. Yeah. But I want to emphasize and say, uh, any any condition can be managed when people are sure of what they're doing. Yes. I always feel like, hey, this cancer thing, everybody's just sitting at a, an, an, an age. Let's wait and see. Mm. I think the worst thing, Amy, is when they give up, everybody yeah. gives up, yeah. and then it's a waiting game. Yeah. Because there is nothing we can do as a family. There was one time I, I stood outside of Kenyatta and I was like, I was asking God, like, really, there's nothing. Yeah. I think yeah. for my case, um, my mom didn't lose hope. Mm. At least my you husband, had somebody. Yeah, and the love, the love of my my daughter, my husband, my mom. Mm. My mom kept on telling me, Jesus is right beside you there. Mm. Don't give up. Mm. And my husband would tell every, you know, they would tell my husband, let your wife write a will oh, yeah. because she's going oh, to yeah. die. Yeah. And she would say, not, don't talk about her like that. Mm. I'm coming back to get the wife that I left in Kenya. Mm. It's, it's, every, every story is very different. I think what gave me hope was when I, when I spoke with Prof. Sike and then I saw the treatment journey and I know, I know that stage two breast cancer is manageable. Mm. It's localized, it's in one region after surgery and there are so many cases that have gotten well. But if it is mismanaged? Oh, of course, oh, mismanagement is this thing of wait, let us go see, getting the right person yeah. is the hardest part yeah. in the management of cancer. Mm getting the right person to manage you. But if it's man mismanaged, how will you know mismanagement? I keep on encouraging people, please pray before going to seek treatment. Mm. God will order your steps. Mm. We will never exhaust talking about cancer. Mm. There is that one thing that you'd wish be rectified when we're talking about cancer diagnosis. Let's begin with Turi. What is this one thing that you felt, I wish it could be done differently? Uh, for me, I just wish after they told us that he had cancer, that they would give us and that they would not rush us into making a decision. Because all through, all we've had people saying was that first surgery should not have been conducted. And maybe we would have talked to other people, you know, mm. uh, discussed other options. But it was just do this, do this now, do this now, it has to be done. So for me, it's just a give, uh, 
families it's not one person like if i tell amy that her mom has cancer it's not only amy mm. this mom depends on a lot of other people and a lot of people also depends on the mother mm. and <laughs> the yeah. mother is a person yeah. <laughs> it's not a data time. Mm -hmm. it's not data yes. so for me it would be that jackie for me, I think uh, I'll talk about, um, I've heard of stories of people who get diagnosed with cancer and the spouse leave. Love, love, love is very important. If you have a sick person, if you have a, a cancer patient, please show them love. Don't talk behind them. Mm. Even if you see like they are going to die the next day, sometimes those people sleep there, they are not sleeping. I remember there are so many times I would sleep in. When I'm saying, they just stop behind me, <laughs> thinking this one is now dead. I'm not dead, I'm just sleeping. I'm just, I can hear what they are saying. And, and, and I think sometimes people don't know, you judge. Mm. And you give up, and you want everybody else to give up on this person. And this person maybe is not giving up on mm. himself. Mm. So don't give up on a sick person until it is over. Mm. Yeah. Show them love. Mm. Be there for them. If you can't be them, there for them, don't hurt them. Mm. Yeah. I was hurt yeah. at one point when I was sick by people who stayed with me. And it was like, you know, you're fighting two things at the same time. Mm. So don't, if you can't show them love, I mean, don't at least just walk them. away. Yeah. Don't don't hurt them. Don't just love them. Mm. Yeah. Hey, what will and I another say? Another thing also I could say, maybe you can try alternative treatment because yeah. it works. Yeah. 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 Because yeah. what you are eating is what is killing us. Change your eating styles. Change your eating habits. Mm. I've seen people who have survived cancer and just by fasting. How many of us even take time to fast? Mm. We take things for granted because you have woken up. Just like I was saying, you can go to the toilet alone. Take time and pray. Even the Muslims, they fast. As Christians, do we take time to fast when everybody else is fasting in church? Mm. Because you can wake up and you, your legs can move you, you, you move. think everything is all right. No, you move. take time to pray, take time to fast. God is able. Amen. What 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 will I say? <sighs> if I had a way of subsidizing financially cancer patients, oh, if I had a way, yeah. people die. They have wanted to do chemo. They can't afford it. Mm. Okay. People die. If they did surgery, they could have gotten better. They die because they couldn't afford it. Mm. If there was a way finances could be re if there was a way diagnosis could be made earlier, mm. if, if there was a way people could be having wellness checkup so that something is identified early enough, if there was a way human resource could be fully equipped in the machinani in the peripheral areas to diagnose early enough and if there was a way patients could make their lives easier by being positive mm. i have nursed patients who died because they lost hope mm. they you die before you die mm. and i want to say like uh i saw my mother having so much i think she had hope because i was in charge yes. Yes. Yeah, I think she got hope. And if you are a caregiver, I have seen patients die because nobody's making a decision and everybody's making a decision. Yes, they're arguing. About they're the sitting on that boardroom. You come out and you ask, so who do we talk to? All of us. So you say this patient needs to be done ABC. Let's talk about convection. Let's, uh, alternative medicine, I have no experience. Uh, conventional medicine of, let's say, stage one surgery, for example, um, prostate cancer, for example, breast cancer. These are cancers that can be managed very easily. You come out, you ask, who do we talk to? All of them. Ah, yeah. You leave them making a decision. One week later, there is no decision. They are there. They are there. They are there. They are there. And if, if people could just know, pray to get the right person to help you make a decision and make a decision properly. Don't allow doctors make a decision for you. Mm. 
sit down, pray, make a decision. That is what I could emphasize. There are so many things, but those are what I can emphasize about. Um, there's this thing I discussed with you a while back, palliative care. Oh, yes. I just feel like as a country, we are not doing very well on this because some patients don't have uh, people who can take care of them full time. Like, like you've talked about it, it's time and it's money and it's mm. everything. Mm. So, yeah, for me as a country, I wish we can do more especially for these patients because it's, it's really a tough them. It, it, it is a tough them. For me, I think, uh, just like Amy said, uh, as a patient, it's also good for you to make your own decision. Yeah. I know when you're in that kind of state, <coughs> it's not easy for you to make the right decision. But there's that first instinct, the feeling that you say, I want to do this. And then people will come and tell you, don't do this. So, do this. Yes, do this. And then somebody comes and says, I saw somebody doing it and it didn't work. So, go with your own son and try and uh, believe, in, believe in yourself, believe in God. Don't lose hope. When you are sick, don't lose hope. Keep hope alive. Read verses, hang on them. I used to hang on my bus. John 11, 4. That this sickness is not unto death, but for the Son of Man to be glorified. And indeed, he was glorified. <laughs> uh, that's it. Uh, I, I want to summarize and say that treatment of cancer and diagnosis, the journey of cancer is never straightforward journey. And if we can do, I want to emphasize, if you can do wellness checkups every year, you will do yourself justice. That's all from Health Focus this week. And I hope you've learned. Let's meet again in the next episode. Have a nice week. I